Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I have the two most popular, most iconic timepieces in the world, uh, right here. You have the Rolex Submariner reference number. Now this is the Rolex Submariner date, reference number 16800 on the right side. And then we have the Omega Speedmaster Professional, uh, reference number 145012 on the left. So these here are in my collection. Um, these are my favorite timepieces. Um, they are the most iconic timepieces. Um, <clears throat> highly replicated uh, on the black market, of course. Um, very, very popular. Lots and lots of history. Um, you know, the Speedmaster went to the moon, especially this reference here. Um, and it's uh, one prior, which was the 105.012. And then the Rolex Submariner was used by uh, Comex, um, French company, you know, diving. Um, I mean, Jacques Cousteau made it popular. Very just when people think of timepieces, these are the two watches they think of. Um, they're so well known. Um, they're, I mean, like I said, heavily copied, um, repli replicated. Um, the design is stolen many times and put into different, you know, various watch companies use their design. So, and they both have excellent movements. Um, you know, they're, this one here, the Speedy is, is running the original 329 or 321 movement, which is a Lemania based 2310, which is used by Patek, AP, uh, Vacheron. Um, they, Omega used this 321 movement from 1946 to 1968. So this actual reference is the last, uh, of that movement used in the Speedy. Uh, after that, it was the 861, which is a cam uh, actuated uh, chronograph instead of the column wheel. So this one's the column wheel, which is highly sought after. The Rolex Submariner, this one is the 16800, which is um, <clears throat> the first Submariner uh, date to have a sapphire crystal. Um, the 3035 movement, which was a, a higher beat movement. The ones prior, uh, like in the 1680, was a, I believe, a 19,000 vibrations per hour movement. This one's 28,800 vibrations per hour. So um, big improvements. Uh, the 1680 had a plastic crystal. This one has a sapphire. Um, just many firsts with this timepiece. Um, that's what makes it so popular. In fact, this one here is... Uh, probably going to go up quite a bit in value. The 1680 have, has skyrocketed. Rocketed. The 16800, I think, is starting to. Um, but um, the one after this is a 16610, which is also very popular as well. Um, but um, these are the last of the, you know, five-digit subs. Um, just, in my opinion, the, the best and most popular and uh, just great vintage reference to get into, still somewhat affordable. Um, they will probably reach that 1680 price eventually, and it'll make it much harder to obtain, and collectors will not <laughs> let them go unless you, you're, you know, giving them a pretty penny. So, and just like the 145012 here, I mean, this is the last of the, of the Speedy with the 321, so highly collectible as well. This one's got the date over 90, or the dot over 90, I mean, um, you have the um, the step dial. I mean, this is this does have replacement hands here on the uh, hour and minute and the chronograph hand, but other than that, everything else is all original. But just a great great condition, great watch. This is a fourteen fifty bracelet, which is sought after. Um, I mean, I, <laughs> these are just super iconic. There is nothing. Nothing out there like these timepieces. When anyone's searching for a new watch, they're looking at these. And then they get scared away by the price, so then they go to, you know, other watches, Tudor, Breitling, you know, um, other watches that are really not as popular. Yeah, it might be well-made as well. I, I can't say they're not going to be well-made, but they will be. Um, but um, they won't be as iconic. They won't have the history. Uh, these two have the history. So just wanted to show you on the wrist real quick, just so you guys can see it. My seven and a half inch wrist, 42 millimeter speedy. This is how it wears. Real nice lugs. Just fits perfect. 
And this bracelet by far is the best speedy bracelet, even comparing to the newer ones. I think it just drapes over your wrist so well. It's like a presidential bracelet, uh, super comfortable, but wears nicely. And then the speed, the uh, Submariner, um, just love the way this thing wears. 40 mil is just a super sweet size. Um, fits on my wrist perfect. Lug to lug, we're like 47. But just, you know, and this is an older bracelet. Everyone complains of, you know, the stamp steel and all that. I love it. I've never had a problem with any of these. I've owned many of them with this style bracelet and never had an issue. And this one for 1984, you got a real sharp crown. You still have um, very nice brushing on top. And you have that beautiful chamfer, that polished chamfer on the tops. So this is in really good condition. Just gorgeous, original bezel as well. So anyway, guys, just wanted to show you a couple uh, classics. Um, the Omega Speedmaster 145012 and the Rolex Submariner Date 16800. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.